Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us all make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will recite for all of us and for myself the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with this authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty Father, you welcome all who come to you in sincerity of heart. Help us never to doubt your tenderness, but rather to entrust ourselves to your mercy and to walk humbly with one another. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the 13th Sunday in the Ordinary, the first reading is taken from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God, since he visited us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha said, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby boy, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you do good, know for whom you are doing it, and your kindness will have its effect. Do good to the just person, and reward will be yours if not from him, from the Lord. Do not neglect hospitality, for through it some have unknowingly entertained angels. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you aware that we were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ Ryan raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Let clay in the hands of a potter to be molded according to his pleasure. So are then in the hands of their creator to be assigned by him their function. 
Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ on this the 13th Sunday in the Ordinary. Whoever does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Words taken from the Gospel of Luke chapter 14 verse 27. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I think that when most of us look at the life of Jesus and read his good news, we find him as one filled not only with the Spirit, but one filled with love, compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. However, in today's Gospel, according to St. Matthew, we see another side of Jesus, who says, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is recorded to use even harsher words. Whoever comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Some may think that with these sayings of Jesus, 
Jesus could be considered as being somewhat bipolar. He teaches us that we should love our neighbor as ourselves one minute and to hate our family the next. But I feel that the essence of today's gospel, Jesus is not sugarcoating what price and commitment it takes to be a true disciple unto him. Merriam-Webster defines a disciple as one who is a follower or student of a teacher, leader, or philosopher. And the word worthy is defined as having worth or value. Now Matthew and Luke seems to use the words worthy and disciple interchangeably, but in reality, to follow Jesus as a true disciple, one must have value. This past week, I attended the annual Eastern Diocesan Altar Servers Retreat in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, where I was one of the main presenters. This year, we spoke of two of Jesus' disciples, St. Peter and St. Paul, which feast day will be this coming Monday, June 29th. Now, Father Senior Nemkovich spoke on St. Peter while I spoke on St. Paul. Peter is known as the Apostle to the Jews, and Paul is known as the Apostle unto the Gentiles. They are like two great pillars in the Church of Christ, of which this church, his church, is supported upon. In our church at our main altar, we find three statues. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Peter, and the Apostle Paul. In doing my research for the presentation of St. Paul, I looked more closely to his discipleship and what it cost him to be a true disciple of Jesus. In the book of Acts, we read that when Paul was traveling to Damascus to arrest Christians, he encountered Jesus as a blinding light and was transformed. But this transformation came with a cost. Paul speaks about this cost and about his hardships in the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 25 and 27, when he writes, Three times I was beaten with rods, once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked, for a night and a day I was adrift at sea, in toil and hardships, through many sleepless nights, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. But with all these hardships, Paul being led by the Holy Spirit, is attributed to having written 14 books of the New Testament. And in a span of 15 years, he had three missionary journeys which covered over 10,000 miles. It is believed also that he established at least 14 church communities. So much for the cost and the rewards of following the Lord. Whenever someone is called unto the Lord and accepts his invitation, one spiritual journey officially begins. It has been said, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch, a phrase that was originated in the 1930s. But think for a moment about the meaning.
to this phrase. As an example, in life, to be a great athlete or musician of any value takes commitment, a lot of hard work, and sacrifice to be able to be successful. Being a true disciple of Jesus is no different, but it is so much more important. When an athlete trains for the Olympics, they seek as their prize a gold medal. While the prize of being a true disciple of Jesus is the reward and assurance of eternal life. Toward the end of Paul's life, while he was imprisoned in Rome and awaiting his fate, which culminated in his martyrdom in 67 AD at the hands of Nero, Paul wrote words to a young priest and later the Bishop of Ephesus, St. Timothy. Paul wrote, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. To take up one's cross, as Jesus says, is, is in reality that just because one chooses to take up the cross and follow Jesus and make him Lord, teacher, and Savior does not take away the hardships of life. But in these hardships, we are strengthened by the Spirit of God to carry on as he carried on even to his own crucifixion and he taught all of us that through his example we can face any obstacles of life when one truly trusts and believes in God you know I believe that Jesus was trying to teach us in today's gospel that a mother a father a wife one's children, a brother, or a sister cannot bring about our salvation. I believe that it is in knowing the Lord through reading his word that we are given the saving grace of God. Jesus reminds us of this in John 17, 3, of a grace that he prayed unto the Father at the Last Supper. Father, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a difference between being a disciple of Jesus and a true disciple of Jesus. Some may claim to follow Jesus, but like being in a poker game, they are not all in. A true disciple of our Lord, who is one like Peter, Paul, the apostles, the saints, the martyrs, have left all to follow him. It is someone who Paul describes in his letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, who is at the starting gate of being a true disciple of Jesus. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so may we take up our crosses Strive to be true disciples of the Lord and commit ourselves unto him on a daily basis, now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, 
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us in our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Contribute to the needs of the Holy Ones and exercise hospitality. intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, into your hands we commend this day our gifts, ourselves, and all of humanity. May we who live the new life in Christ prefer no one and nothing over you. May we care for others as you care for us. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ. Announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his sacred ministry. Empowered by your grace and strength, may we faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our care. And so on this day, we join with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels, and all your angels, along with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory this day, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer up to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. This day we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the homeless and for the hungry, the unemployed, for all victims of the COVID-19. We pray also this day for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad, for all those who serve in our armed forces, and all your presence whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for their hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the mother of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom, May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them unto himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that all moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. of this Christ your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not doing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Admonished by salutary precepts and following divine institution, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary. Together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by your help, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, 
your Son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this King commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Love and truth will meet. Justice and peace will kiss. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, remove the barriers of sin among us who have been guests at your sacred table. As we have received you, so let us receive the one who sent you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which, which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may it be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe. But only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not receive him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. brothers and sisters, I wish to thank you for sharing with us today's Holy Mass, prayers and blessings for you and for your family. And let us conclude this morning service with the offering of prayer for all those who are having difficulty at this time. Let us pray for the living as well as to pray for the deceased. May the name of Jesus be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. 
May perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.